pretty sight than looking back on a town you left behind. And there's nothing that's as real as the love that's in my mind. Close your eyes, I'll be here. Towns Van Zant's I'll Be Here in the Morning. What a beautiful song. Let's do it. Oh, and a quick note. I've started doing tabs for the last video in this one. Please comment below. Let me know if this is helpful. You can find the tab on my website, which is in the, the description below, malaromusic.com. It's more work for me to write it out. I mean, not a ton of work, but kind of. So let me know if it's helpful if you guys are using them or if you're just kind of like playing through the video and learning that way. And of course, if you guys are getting value out of this, consider my Patreon below. The value for value model is where it's at. I certainly don't want to like put ads on these videos. So, you know, that would be greatly appreciated. If not, just enjoy the content, share, tell your friends about how funny and like, cool I am. Tell him you met this guy on the internet and you're buddies now and that he plays the guitar and he's really not that funny, but you like him because he plays the guitar. I, I don't know why you're watching these videos, but all right, let's get to it. This song uses some simple chords, nothing fancy, a C, an F, a G, and a D. Four chord tune. Capo is on the fourth fret. That's the studio version at least. And it begins with this regular C shape. This song is really cool, and, and Towns does this quite a bit, where other guys don't, where he's often doing a really big leap, where his the second and fourth beat of the thumb will be on the third string instead of the, the fourth, right? So like on an F chord, we're doing that big leap. And then the melody is always on the top two strings. So that happens quite a bit in Towns songs and gives it a bit of his, you know, his signature style. So we have this pickup, it starts on... A C chord. We, our thumb is going between the fifth and the third string on the C chord. And our first beat we play the fifth and the second string together and we hammer right at the beginning. We already have this compound motion and the thumbs alone on the third string. Then the next beat is open on the fifth. Sorry, thumb on the fifth, and then open on the, the first string, high E. But you still want that pinky to be ringing out. It gives it a really pretty sound. And then on the and beat, after that thumb on the third string, the pinky's still down. Then together, five and one. Then third, second. So together, fifth and second, thumb alone, fifth and first, thumb alone, and then second string alone. Then thumb alone. Then you lift the pinky, play the melody note, first fret, second string. That little intro part. A little bit slower. And I'm lifting that pinky at the last possible second to get that melody note down there. Right, because it's not lifting exactly on the beat with the thumb. I think you got it. Here's a G chord. That's the pattern. Thumb is doing six, three, but then I'm hammering on the fifth string. I lift it open and I hammer on to the second. So it's six, three, hammer on the fifth, back to three. And the first beat is with the second string, six and two. Thumb alone, and then and on the second string again. 
together, long hammer. So we only have the melody note at the beginning on the second string, and then on the end of the last beat. One, two, three, and four, and those two parts together. Those two parts together. Right back to the C chord here. The pattern now is fifth string, third, hammer on the fourth, open to two, then back to the third. With some fun stuff in between. So let's get that. We have. We only have the end of the four beat playing the melody note on the second string, right? Thumb, thumb. Second half is what's harder. So we have thumb and on the first string, then thumb and on the second string. And here we do the hammer on, and then the thumb alone. Thumb, hammer on, thumb alone. So it's just the beginning that has the color. Thumb, first string, thumb, second string, right? twice. So that whole pattern together. So the beginning and the end are sparse. It's the middle where you get the color. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. This is really pretty. Real classic towns pattern. Very uh, light and um, smooth. I know you're doing it, you're killing it, you're rocking it. You know you're doing well if your grandma's is in the house, maybe your grandma's hanging out with you, and she said, mm, that sounds like maple syrup. Then you know you're doing a good job. If your grandma ever comments that you're playing sounds like maple syrup, especially in the summer months, if she says, that sounds like maple syrup on a hot august day then you know you're you're on the right course keep working on it you're doing good here we have a verse where he starts singing we still have a c chord but that whole pattern is simplified a bit we just have one two three and four one two three and four and that and is on the second string um the rest of them are just uh fifth third fourth third chord bar f chord and remember that town's kind of style big jump with a thumb six string to the third and we have um right just back and forth between those the melody notes on top though are then we have a note sorry Second string. Second, first, second. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. So melodies back and forth between first, second, first. Then it's back to that cool C part. about a minute ago not even 30 seconds ago so the verse format is the C chord uh, what are the words so the verse format is the C chord there's no stronger wind than the one that blows down a lonesome railroad line right fancy C part then back to the simple C there's no other wind that a bump a dawn and then it's a D, then the love that's in your quick D. And it's just um, 
thumb, 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 doing a four, three, five, three, four, three, five, three. And in between we have just the and of that third beat. One, two, three, and on the second string. And then thumb alone on four. One, two, three, and four. It's only one D and then it's straight to a G chord. Okay, this G chord here is the hardest part of the song. Also the prettiest, really beautiful. And even there, I didn't lift my fingers exactly at the right time. There we go. Difficult to get smooth. Thumbs easy, just six to three, back and forth. Right, now we have these in-between beats. One, two, three, and. My pinky's down on the third fret of the highest string. One, two, three, and four, and. That melody note is open on the second string. So we have the and of three, and then the end of four. But we, of course we keep that pinky down, right? We want it all to be smooth. One, two, three, and four, and. So really practice that. once but practice that get it smooth the next part we're dropping that pinky down to the first fret so it's like a G7 chord and then our pinkies down on the third fret of the second string so it's one and two and thumb first string thumb second string thumb open on the first string or sorry uh, whatever melody note open on the first string and then thumb alone so first string, second, open on the first string. First string, second, open on the first again. With the thumb, you know, doing the six, three in between still. Let me smooth that out, put it all together real smooth here. to explain that it's tricky I'm gonna break it down again if you think you got it jump ahead a bit but I'll, I'll do another breakdown because it's really tricky we have that beginning pattern pretty straightforward one two three and four and right but it's a transition here at the last possible second I'm turning that G into that G7, moving my pinky down to my first finger on that first string. Right, last possible second. The tendency is to like, when you're moving your thumb, to move that finger, but I'll, but I'll show you the wrong way, right? You've, it farts out too early when you do it like this. Right, you're gonna get a pull off sound or a dead sound. So it's about moving. I play the melody note and then I lift that at the last moment sounds weird when you play it slow but I swear that's right then back to the simple C one two three and four one two three and four back to that F that we talked about one two and three and earlier in the song back to C the really neat C part and then we have the chorus here Mike's intimate YouTube method this is the part where I get all emotional and I I hold the webcam in my hands and I look longingly at my my YouTube buddies and share personal secrets. In my mid-twenties, I must confess, I listened to way too much Towns Van Zandt. I listened to him all the time. And I thought in order to write a good song like Towns Van Zandt, I had a drink like Towns Van Zandt. And I drank way too much. So to all you young folkies out there, I want you to know and take this sincere message to heart that you don't have to drink to be a good songwriter. 
Towns wasn't a good songwriter because of his drinking. He was a good songwriter in spite of his drinking. Despite, shit, is it in spite or despite? I said a bad word now too. Does that mess up my YouTube views? This isn't working, this intimate moment. But but listen, for real, you don't have to drink. You can you can you can drink tea and write good songs. You can drink coffee. Your songs will be just as good. In fact, they'll be better. You'll be more clear headed. You'll have more time to write songs because you won't be hung over. You'll remember the beautiful conversations you had with your friends in those moments when you drunkenly hung them. Because if you weren't drunk, you would remember that you, you wouldn't have drunkenly hugged them though, but you would have normally hugged them and that would be just as good and you'd remember it too. So the message here is that you don't have to be an idiot drunk like Tans Van Zandt to write beautiful songs. At least I don't think so. I think it's, I don't think so. I think you can do it otherwise. All right, now go, go grab life by the, whatever the Spanish word is for balls. And, and get to writing your folk songs. Thanks. Thanks for being a great audience, guys. Here's the chorus. Note that on the recording, he does it different every time he plays the chorus. Sometimes he's walking a lot between the G and the F. Other times he isn't. Put headphones on. You'll hear Towns' acoustic nice, loud, and clear in your left ear. Um, but I'm just going to do the walk every time because it's, it's really pretty and it sounds good. So we have this G chord. So we have this G chord, same idea, back and forth between six and three. My pinky's down. So one, two, and is on the second string. Then the and's on the first string. And then it's back to the second string, so it's... Second, first, second, one, two, and three, and four, and second, first, second. That's the first phrase. One, two, and three, and four, and. And it starts the same way. One, two, and. But then you walk down. Three, two, all on the low sixth string. Then it's the same idea on the F chord. Let me talk about that F. Same idea. Now I'm going between six and three. Um, the in-between notes are one, two, and on the second string, thumb, and on the first string, thumb, and on the second string. Second, first, second, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and. Then you walk back up to the G. straight to an F. Two and well, we'll get to that in a second. So let's put all that together. You have this G. Walk down. Walk up. Right? Close your eyes. I'll be here in the morning. Sorry, I messed it up there. Close your eyes. I'll then he interrupts it with an F, B here, for a, and that F, I don't know, I'm hearing like a melody note on the first hit, which breaks the pattern. So it's six and one together, thumb alone, and on the second string, thumb alone, and on the first string, together, and, and four, one, two, and three, and four, together, second, first, together, second, first. Sorry, the second and first, I'm referring to the melody note, right? Always assume that the thumb is doing this, unless noted otherwise. So you've got that. Then he concludes, he interrupts that F with that somber conclusion. It's so awesome and unexpected. He does the same exact trick in um, uh, Pancho and Lefty, where he ends the chorus on an A minor. Uh, so A minor, same idea. We have a, a actually we have a three note pattern. The thumb is doing five, three, six, three, five, three, six. And then he lifts it where he anticipates the next chord, which is a G. 
So it's A minor, five, three, six, three, five, three, six. Lift that hand up and we'll transition to the G chord. With the melody, we have this. One, two, and is the second string. One, two, and three, and is the first string. Four, and is the second string, right? So that's the repeating pattern all over, right? Second, first, second is that melody. One, two, and three, and four, and. It's the first measure. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. He only plays that once, then we go straight into this next phrase. One, two, and three, and four is that open, because we're going to transition to the next chord. So it's one, two, and is the second string. Three, and is the first string. Thumb alone, but we lift it. And I'm lifting all of them. I don't know. I'm trying to... Yeah, I'm just getting ready for the next chord. And then it ends on that beautiful G chord again. With all that movement that we talked about earlier, that G to the G7. I'll be here in the morning. Beautiful little tune. Let's do it.